Analysis time. Uh, over here is my macro photography jig. I have a camera pointing downwards with uh, obviously some suitable illumination. And below it is a very special integrated circuit. It happens to be the oldest one that I own. It comes from a product probably designed in the late 1960s to early 1970s. I believe it's a digital integrated circuit uh, and it's really old. It's pushing 50 years old. So it's one of the very first examples of a digital integrated circuit. Uh, okay, I'm going to take a look at the die uh, and uh, try to analyze what in the world it is. Take a look at the package because it is quite unique and uh, quite unusual. And uh, I'm going to have some comments here even on the actual uh, setup here. To, um, photographing silicon dies is quite a challenge. Uh, so here's the die looking downwards and of course the silver lines of the top metallization layer. And if you look at them they're very wide by today's standard. I mean they're almost visible to the naked eye. Uh, this chip was undoubtedly laid out by hand on a material called Rubolith. Uh, it predates CAD by probably several decades. Uh, looking at the inner portion there, there's 10 what looks like virtually identical circuits. And um, I'm going to speculate there are flip-flops. And uh, what we're looking at here is potentially a shift register or a very primitive one-bit wide uh, register of some sort. If you look on the left-hand side, you can see what nine connections going off to each of these unique cells potentially control pins on the right and then on the bottom power. Uh, if anyone out there actually knows what this chip is, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, the only other identification I can find on it is it's a 221A and a search on the internet finds uh, absolutely no mention of that kind of chip. Let's um, take a zoom out now and uh, take a look at the uh, package because it also is a really great uh, example of industrial uh, engineering uh, in a very early development of the integrated circuit. The package construction uh, basically is all ceramic. It consists of a ceramic bottom plate and then they deposited a, a metallization and then gold plated it for the leads and then on the top they have another ceramic top. The ceramic obviously highly prized because it has a really excellent coplanarity um, and really good thermal uh, conductivity. So uh, ceramics have historically been always used in very high reliability uh, circuits. Uh, eventually integrated circuits all moved to plastic packaging for uh, the important uh, price. Uh, the package has two holes in it. Uh, it looks like there's probably some sort of robotic handler that came down and probably uh, picked the package up. Uh, and of course with a one inch wide package that was possible. Eventually of course all that went away. Uh, if you take a peek at the package uh, with a bright light behind it you can sort of see the uh, metallizations uh, working towards the actual um, die. And then here there's a real zoomed in photograph showing the, one of the bond wires uh, attaching to the edge of the package uh, and going on to the die. Um, it looks like the entire package was probably laid out by hand. I think this entire design predates CAD entirely. Uh, so macro photography definitely is the uh, domain of a uh, SLR camera. You need to have something where you can swap the lenses here and we'll show why in a second. Uh, this is just a Canon uh, T3i, certainly an entry level uh, DLSR, but it's certainly more than suitable for this application. Uh, the next bit of kit you need is a macro focusing rail. Uh, the depth of field of focus is extremely small on these uh, types of photography and uh, this is an Amazon item. I'll just pop up the listing for that. Uh, it was uh, quite straightforward. I uh, need of course some sort of jig to hold the camera pointing in the right direction. I like to point my camera downwards and then rest the integrated circuit uh, onto this bench here so I get a good shot. And the next thing you need to do is uh, get the lens so it can focus on a, a very uh, small item. Uh, the standard 1855 kit lens only focuses down to about a meter, I think, uh, which isn't quite right. You'll have to purchase another bit of kit here we'll talk about in a second. So the uh, successful setup requires a, something called a reversing ring, uh, easily purchased off Amazon for about $10. Uh, and then, uh, so bizarre as it might sound, you actually just reverse the um, lens on the camera uh, by screwing this adapter onto the threads of the lens and then putting onto the camera body. Um, and that seems to create the uh, the best quality macro jig. Uh, then I set it to 18 millimeters, which is uh, the smallest uh, zoom lens, zoom of settings on this lens. And uh, that was a successful setup. So with lens pointing downward with the lens now reversed, the other bit of kit you need is a monitor. Uh, this particular camera dries out to an HDMI monitor and I have one over here. And uh, you then turn it on uh, to live view and uh, the picture shows up onto the monitor. The reason why that's critical is actually it's extremely uh, small uh, field of focus. So you have to, uh, in this camera, go to a zoom setting and uh, you really have to tweak around to get the exact focus uh, on the camera dialed in uh, before you take the photograph. Uh, the other key bit of kit is you need to have a remote control on the camera. Uh, it shakes so much that um, 
if you uh, don't have that, uh, you'll end up with a blurry photograph as well. Uh, but surprisingly cheap, right? Uh, there's a wooden stand here that costs nothing to make. The macro rail behind, which wasn't too expensive, the reversing ring. And then just the standard kit camera. This happens to be a Canon uh, camera with its 18 uh, to 55 uh, millimeter lens, sort of a probably the most basic uh, entry-level SLR you can get. And you get some really decent photographs in that sub-millimeter range. It's a very awkward range to capture. Uh, if you uh, get a little bit uh, smaller, obviously a microscope's great. You get a little bit bigger, you can use a standard macro lens, but this sort of die size you seem to run into a lot. Uh, this particular setup seems to be the, uh, the right approach. Uh, so to this day, I actually don't know what this IC exactly does. Um, let me uh, throw up uh, the listing of my Flickr account where I throw high resolution photographs um, if you want to take a look at them. Uh, and if anyone has actually any history on this chip or knows what it actually might be looking at, I'd certainly love to hear from you. Uh, in terms of the photography kit, uh, here's a listing from Amazon for the macro rail. And uh, here's a listing for the reversing ring. So a uh, really simple, straightforward um, photography technique required for this um, sort of three to five millimeter field of view. It's a fairly awkward uh, size. It's just between basically a microscope, which tends to zoom in a little bit too much and use something called a computerized XY rail, uh, and a standard macro lens, which is more of a you know, multi-centimeter type of view, field of view. So hope you found that interesting. Um, and uh, that was my investigations of the oldest I see in my junk drawer.